we saw a lot of different wrinkles in your game. We saw the jab, we saw the uppercut, and we even saw the body shots because I feel like the, the your body shot arsenal hasn't been displayed yet yet in the yeah. pros like it was in the amateurs because that's really yeah. what I noticed from you in the amateurs was the body shots. Yeah, yeah. Every every fight we go, we gonna start pulling more and more things out as as that progress too. So there, there there's a lot of things we've been working on me and my team. So you know, thanks to them, I, we we've been working, working, and working. So. Shout out to my team, you know, especially uh, my my coach, uh, Coach Mark, my coach, Coach Asa, and especially my dad too, Ignacio. Well, all three of us, man, we've been we've been grinding. You you come from a boxing family. Uh, a lot of people know the Blancas as you know from the amateur scene. Your your younger brother Aldo as well just fought on the nationals. How was that experience watching your little bro? You know, try to try to follow in your footsteps. Yeah, it was it was a, it was like. It felt good, you know, because especially I was just like in his shoes, like almost a few months ago. And uh, now I'm seeing him still chase his dreams and um, I'm chasing my dreams, too. I'm, I'm into the pro game now. So I try I try to give him advice since I was literally like, literally just in his shoes. So he, he's he's making his uh, he's making his way too. he's he's learning. And, and soon they're, they're, they don't know who the Blancas brothers are, you know. <laughs> Because a, a lot of people they don't know that Milwaukee. We were talking about it uh, before, like Milwaukee and the four one four. There's a lot. There's a lot of rasa up there, right? We got a lot of Mexicans up there. We got a lot of people out there. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of rasa, bro. You know, look that that beautiful flag. <laughs> we we got a lot of rasa here, bro, in Milwaukee. How important? How important is it to, to you to because you represented uh, this country, represented Team USA, but to also be recognized as as, as, a, as a Mexican as as well, and to be proud of your heritage and and your descent. Oh yeah, of course, man. Having having uh to represent Mexico and all, all my all my raza, it's, it feels great, man. You know, especially because Mexicans we we love boxing. So having all those fans, having all them, all those people show support is that 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 makes you like push it to another level. Was it was it important for you for your for your dad um, growing up for you to speak Spanish? Because I saw your I saw your interview with Juan Manuel Marquez and you did it in in a hundred percent in Spanish and it, and it came out great. Uh, was that was that important for you for your dad to to install Spanish in you and make sure that you spoke Spanish? Oh yeah, most definitely. Spanish Spanish is all, has always been my first language. I, I uh, learned Spanish first and then English. So I've always been speaking Spanish here uh, at home and uh, pretty much all the time. So do, uh, doing that interview with Marquez that that was amazing too. Now nah, think about it, man. You're only two fights in and you're doing an interview with Juan Manuel Marquez. What was that like sitting down with him and having him? Ask ask you about you. You know, you're not even talking about him. He's talking about you. How did that feel? It was it was uh, it was definitely you know pretty. I was a little nervous. I can't even lie. <laughs> I was I was right. You know, the Mexican legend Marquez. Like, so definitely it was it was awesome, awesome. You being 160. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. No, no, no. You good? Go ahead. I was saying, you being a 168 pounder, how has it been being around guys like that fought near your weight or at your weight, like Roy Jones and Tarver? Like, what do they, what do they see? Like, what do they tell you? Like, when you run into them, because it seems like the pro box, y'all are there. Like, you set up camp there, and then you have the fights there. So, are you seeing these guys often? Yeah, I, I see them pretty often, and whenever I get a chance to ask them some questions and stuff, I I gotta take advantage because it's not, you know, for others, like not everyone's gonna be able to. Uh, to ask let some legends some questions about the game you know so me being with them right there i'm like i got i got to i got to like i have to you know do, do you feel like do you feel like the pro box has been a, a perfect fit for you because you're being you've been busy you fought like i said you fought two months ago and then i would believe what it was like march 24 yeah. 25th something like that yeah, and then march boom 25th. right away two months later may 20th you already had another fight does, does that seem like What's well, going to be going on with you? You're going to be fighting every two months or so. Your first few years. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be keeping me active here uh, at Pro Box. I'm, I'm real, real happy here, and and soon, um, Pro Box, Pro Box is going to blow up. We got, we got a lot of things coming, a lot of things coming. So I'm, I'm very excited to be a, a part of this, and I can't wait to see how how far we can get. Now, the, what's been the the transition from the amateurs to the pros? Like I said, you had over 200 amateur fights, so the amateurs you were already, like I said, some guys you fought you didn't even remember their names because you were already so used to it. Yeah. And now, and now the transition as the pros fighting these four round fights, opposed to the three rounds with no headgear. What's mm -hmm. what's been the biggest change? And do you feel like your next fight may be a six rounder? 
the the biggest change is definitely those those tiny gloves, those ten ounce gloves, man. Every every punch, every punch, you you just feel. So, uh, working on my defense has definitely been a big part too, because I, I don't want to get hit with those gloves. You feel every little nick, every everything. So I'm not I don't I'm not trying to get hit, you know. <laughs> and and for my next fight, um, that's what I'm thinking about. Maybe I might just do my third third fight is gonna be another four rounder, maybe. But if not, then we'll see, you know, because that's what I've been talking with my team, too. So we're going to see maybe one more four-rounder. Do you feel like you're getting solid opponents? Uh, Your first two guys were solid guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm not not fighting no average, you know, like tomato cans, you know. Like these these ones, these guys actually knew how to throw throw punches. And if I, um, like, made a careless mistake or, like, just, like, dropping my hands too much and they caught me, I could have, I could have got hurt. So I definitely have to uh, keep staying on my toes. Now, right now, you're just starting out your career, like we said, two and zero with one knockout. Um, you know, you're still you're still a few years away from the from the title contention. But when you look at your at your weight class or around one sixty eight, you see David Benavides, um, you see David Morrell Jr., Canelo, all these guys, even Bivol. Um, what what are, what are your yeah. thoughts when you, when you watch these guys? Does it seem like one guy is above the rest, or they're all uh, about even? Like they're just they're they're all good. No, they're they're all beasts. Like every every single one of them has that one thing that makes them special, you know. And watching them, I'm like, damn, that's cool. like I'm like, first, hopefully that's gonna be me soon. And and it's just also like I try to learn from them, watching them fight, try to try to take some things that they're doing and you know implement it to my style. So I love watching about them guys. We had talked before me and you about the the new Mexican, the 168, the guy like yourself, Diego Pacheco. Uh, David Benavides, he's half Ecuadorian, but, you know, he's still Mexican. And, yeah, you know, yeah. y'all, and then uh, David Morrell, a Cuban at 168, these big Latin fighters at 168. Um, do, you, do, you, do you see that, that switch a little bit? That, that there's a, like I said, there's a new blood and, and the new school of boxing? Oh, yeah, most definitely. Uh, Hispanics and especially Mexicans, we're, we're getting bigger now. <laughs> we used to dominate those, those little weight classes, you know, but now... Now we're getting bigger, and now hopefully in the future, you know, we can we can take over the big weight classes too. Because uh, <laughs> like a, a lot of people don't know, but how big are you? Uh, if you could tell them your 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 height. Yeah, that's that's the thing. When people see me in person, like, oh damn, like you're you're. I didn't think you were that big, especially because I'm Mexican, you know. But I'm, <laughs> I'm actually uh, I'm six three, so. Like I saw, I saw Diego Pacheco in person. He's a legit six four. I'm like, damn, dude. Like, yeah. like, like y'all 